Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining this webinar today presented by the WHA Virtual Library. I'm Tyler Ostapik, a librarian with the WHA Virtual Library, and today I'm going to talk to you about videos and video resources. And apologies if there's a bit of background noise. We're having an event at the Brody Center right now, but hopefully you can still hear me. This session is being recorded. The recording as well as a copy of the slides will be shared with you after the presentation. And if you have questions, there's a questions option in the GoToWebinar box, which will likely be on the right-hand side of your screen. Feel free to enter your questions at any time, and there will also be some time at the end for any additional questions you might have. Before we start looking at videos and video resources, I'm going to briefly mention the WHA Virtual Library Services available to you. Then I'm going to discuss some of the advantages and disadvantages of video content. And after that, I will demo some of the various WHA virtual library and public resources you can use to find and access videos. If you're a WHA staff from an eligible community health agency or from an eligible personal care home, you have a number of electronic resources and library services available to you through the WHA virtual library. This includes access to a number of different information tools and resources, as well as literature searches, document delivery, and education and training sessions like this one today. So you might be wondering why you'd want to consult a video. There are a number of reasons why you may want to watch video instead of using a more traditional source of information such as a journal article or attending a lecture. Firstly, videos can be very helpful for demonstration. Sometimes it's much easier to demonstrate a procedure or practice than it is to describe it in a written format. Similarly, videos can use animations and other audiovisual strategies to summarize complex information in a way that is more engaging and accessible than other formats. Videos are also repeatable and often give you a lot of control over the content. Unlike an in-person demonstration, if you missed something or didn't understand something, you can easily go back and rewatch or sometimes even slow the video down. You can also watch a video over again later when you need a refresher on a topic. Many videos are also linkable and can be shared with colleagues or embedded in larger information resources. They can be very useful for supplementing information found in other formats. Videos are also succinct. When done right, a video can present information more efficiently than say a journal article, which means you can potentially get the same amount of information in a shorter time. Also, some studies have shown that combining video and audio can increase retention of information, so people are more likely to remember the info later on. This can be especially true for people who are more visual learners. When looking for videos, there are a few things to keep in mind and watch out for. As you will see when I start going through some of the video resources, for videos it can sometimes be difficult to determine how up-to-date information a video is. Occasionally there may be no indication of when a video was created or last updated. Other times there may be a date for a video, but it might not be clear whether this is the date the video is uploaded, updated, or created. For example, a video could have originally been created in 2005, but uploaded to YouTube in 2021. This distinction is important when considering how up-to-date the information in a video is. You also notice that depending on the resource, it can sometimes be difficult to determine the authoritativeness, accuracy, or reliability of the information provided in a video. It's always a good idea to keep an eye out for the source of the information in the video and to critically assess whether the source should be considered reliable. For example, a video on YouTube from an unknown individual may not be reliable, but a video posted through the New England Journal of Medicine's official YouTube channel is more likely to contain accurate information. Sometimes videos will cite the source of the information they contain, but unlike journal articles, they don't always have references, which can make verifying the information they contain more difficult. Videos also aren't always indexed, as well as other types of resources, such as journal articles, which it means it can potentially be more difficult to find relevant information. Depending on the resource, it may not be possible to search by subject, so you may need to rely on searching different terms to find a relevant video. For example, if you are looking for a video on a physical assessment, you may need to search for assessment, assess, exam, examination, etc. to find what you're looking for. Depending on the resource, you may have little control over the results page and how your results are ranked, which means you may need to do quite a bit of searching and scrolling through results before you find something useful and relevant. In terms of finding video content, the video page on our website is a good place to start. And I'll show you now what that looks like. 
So from our homepage, you can click on resources videos to get to our video page. This page includes a list of links to a number of video resources available through the WHA Virtual Library. And I'll be going through a few of these resources later on. And we also have a curated list of useful free videos organized by topic. You can type in a keyword to filter the list because as you can see, the list is quite long. So for example, I could type in dementia here. And these are videos we've found related to dementia. We maintain this list regularly and try to ensure clinical videos are not more than five years old and other videos aren't older than 10 years. The first resource in our resources list is Access Medicine, and this is the first resource we'll be looking at today. Access Medicine provides instant answers to clinical questions from trusted sources. It has over 300 examination and procedural videos searchable by category or system. And when you open Access Medicine, you may need to log in when you go to access it. You can find videos under the multimedia tab. There are different types of video content, including diagnostic imaging studies, pathophysiology and anatomy animations, lectures, physical examination videos, patient interviews, and procedural videos. If you're looking for videos on a specific subject, you can use the bar at the top here. So for example, if we're going to look for something about eye examinations, we could search for eye. And then on the left-hand side here, you can see there's an option to filter by multimedia, and we can click on that and click videos. And if we scroll down, we can see here, this looks like a video for an eye examination. Below the page, you'll have the video along with the transcript. You'll notice there's no date for the video. You can click on this info button. But even here, you just get a list of the source of the video, but not the date the video was created. However, if you go back to your results page, you can click on this view and context button, which will bring you to the source of the video, which in this case is this textbook. And from there, we can click on Get Citation, and that will give us an idea of how old the video is. So we can see it's from this publication from 2020. So the information is about two years old at this point. The next resource we're going to look at is the Health and Care Video Library. This is produced by a UK-based digital health agency. And the goal of this resource is to use short and simple videos to help you and the people you care for. The videos primarily contain patient education information or basic information for individuals who aren't familiar with the topic. The videos are written by medical scriptwriters and reviewed by health professionals, but they do warn it's only general advice and shouldn't be used as a substitute for information from a health professional. And it's also available as an app. When we go to the site, you can filter the topics by letter. So for example, if we're interested in kidney disease, we could click on K for kidney. And there's also a search bar at the top. So we could search for heart, for example. And you can see here, there's three results for heart, but things aren't indexed particularly well in this resource. So if we search, for example, myocardium, or cardiovascular, we get zero results. So it's important to keep in mind that if you don't find a re result initially, there may be topics, you may just have to use other terms. And it's probably best to use more general terms since this is more of a patient education resource. When you find a topic you're interested in, you can click on the topic. Here you get a list of videos. You can further filter them by the categories on the left-hand side of the page. So we can look at pacemakers, for example. And on the right-hand side, you have links to various resources that supplement the video material. And the video player is pretty basic, but they do include closed captioning. One thing you have to watch out for, though, is there's no dates for these videos. So you can't really get a sense of when they were last updated. 
Their website does save videos are reviewed regularly to ensure they provide up-to-date information, but it's difficult to verify how up-to-date the information really is. The New England Journal of Medicine has its own multimedia section on its website. Their videos include quick takes as well as videos in clinical medicine. Quick takes started out as summaries of key medical findings embedded in related articles, but they can now be browsed independently. The content of quick takes are reviewed by physician editors for accuracy, quality, and scope. Videos in clinical medicine are peer-reviewed procedural videos accompanied by summaries describing the procedure. The videos aim to help students, trainees, and younger physicians to learn procedural techniques from experienced colleagues. And you can find both on the New England Journal of Medicine website under the multimedia tab. And so here we have the quick takes, as well as the procedural videos, which are labeled videos in clinical medicine. When you click on the quick takes, you'll see a couple of highlighted videos at the top. But if you scroll down, you'll get to the full list of videos, which include the date the video was created, which is great, and which can be filtered by various categories. And if you click through to view the video, there is a share option on the left-hand side. And it also tells you which article the video is summarizing, and you can click through to see that article as well. As I mentioned, the videos in clinical medicine are procedural videos. Similar to the quick takes, you can filter by specialty by clicking on the filter button and clicking on a specialty. And when you go through to view the video, you have the option to download the video in MP4. And you also have the option to skip to certain sections of the video, which can be very helpful. And underneath the video itself, you have a detailed text-based description of the procedure, which includes images as well. It's worth mentioning that this journal also has a YouTube channel where it shares its quick takes and some of its other content. So if you prefer to use YouTube to view videos instead of going to their website, that's also an option. The next resource we're going to look at is Clinical Key. This resource provides standardized medical knowledge to promote consistent evidence-based practices. It offers the latest evidence across specialties in a variety of formats, including over 8,000 videos. Clinical Key's procedure videos offer high-quality text illustrations and multimedia for each procedure. And you can find the procedure videos on the homepage for Clinical Key under Procedure Videos. And you can filter the video or the procedure by letter or by specialty, or you can type in a specific procedure if you're interested in it. And it may just take a second to find it. And since it's not loading, I'll demo how to use the search bar at the top to find a video. So for example, if you didn't want to scroll through the letters or it wasn't working, you can type something up here. So we could type CAS, for example. Then on the left-hand side at the top, under source type, you can click show more, and you can limit to procedure videos or to all videos. In this case, there isn't a procedure for CAS, but I'll show you the procedure video for third trimester obstetric ultrasound. So at the top, you have the video itself, and underneath you have a detailed description of the procedure, which is similar to the New England Journal of Medicine website. To show you another example where I know they do have procedures, I'll search for arm splints. And then again, just go show more procedure videos. And here we have a procedure for short arm splints. So you have the video itself followed by a description of the procedure. Now it's important to note that Clinical Key doesn't just have procedure videos, it has other videos as well. So you can search for videos on non-procedural topics. We could search for nutrition, for example. Again, under show more, click on videos. You can see there are 25 videos related to nutrition. Now it's important to note 
that these videos are from a variety of different sources, so you just want to pay attention to where the video is coming from and how old it is. If you click on the video underneath, you can get a sense of where it's from, as well as the date the source was published. So in this case, we can see it's from 2020. And this should give you a pretty good idea of how recent and reliable the information in the video might be. The next resource we'll be looking at is Nursing Education Video. This is a collection of 300 plus demonstration and training videos with over 100 hours of content designed to help nurses and allied health workers improve their clinical skills. Videos cover a wide range of subjects related to nursing and allied health, and each video has a brief introduction and lasts an average of 20 minutes. We load this resource. You can see a filter option at the top here, and you can filter by subject or by date. All of the videos have a date associated with them, which is great, and if you don't want to click through to the video, you can click on the See Details button and you'll get a brief description of the video. If you're looking for something specific, there is a search bar at the top. So if you're interested in tracheostomy care, for example, you can search tracheostomy. And try to spell it right this time. Here we have a video on tracheostomy care. When you click through, again, you have a description of the video. You can cite it and even download it to a citation manager. You can share the video either as a link or you can embed the link on a website or you can share it through social media. And if you want to watch the video, you can just click play. One of the neat things about this resource is you can also create clips. You do need to have an account to create a clip, but it's free to create an account. And to create a clip, you just click on Create Clip, and then we're going to call this Tracheostomy Care Clip. And then we can provide a brief description of the clip. And then you can select a specific time range that you want for the clip. And so you can make it available to only you, to your institution, or to the public. And then once you've created your clip, We'll pick institutional, you can click save changes. And then once it's saved, it should show up on the right hand side and you can click options and share that specific clip, which could be very helpful. And it's great if you're wanting to create a clip to go back to or to share a certain section with your colleagues. As I mentioned, there are dates included for the videos, but some of the videos are quite old. So depending on the topic, you may want to find a more recent video, especially if you're looking at a more clinical procedure. If a more up-to-date video has been created on a topic, they will keep the old video, but mark it as superseded, which is really helpful. So for example, if we look at techniques in bathing, you can see there's a video from 2010 that is now marked superseded because they've created this more recent video for 2021. So if you find a topic that's marked superseded, you can likely find another video that's more up to date. Our next resource, Nursing and Mental Health in Videos, is designed to assist nurses in understanding, assessing, diagnosing, and managing mental health issues that often present themselves alongside physical conditions. It includes over 240 videos of the most common mental health disorders nurses may encounter in various settings, including primary care and emergency rooms. There are 20 different cases with different scenarios for each case that demonstrate important skills such as limit setting, diffusing anger, patient negotiation, and phrasing of questions. Examples of cases include panic order and OCD, Alzheimer's dementia, bipolar disorder, and depression. Many of the cases also include key takeaways and future treatment options. This set of videos is also provided through Alexander Street, so the interface works the same as the interface for nursing and education that I just showed you. So if we go to the interface here, you can see again, there's a filter option at the top, there's a search bar, and you have the dates the videos were last updated or created. And this just gives you a sense of the different cases covered and the different types of scenarios that are addressed in the videos. 
Another useful resource for videos is the Merck Manual. This is a peer-reviewed reference aid for physicians and pharmacists. Articles in the manual are supplemented by procedure rehabilitation and examination videos. And when you go to their website, at the top of the page, there's a resources tab. And under there, there's an option for videos. Once you get to the videos list, you can refine by type, so by exam, procedure, or rehab, or you can refine by keyword, so you can type in a specific keyword and hit apply. And you can also use the search bar at the top. So for example, we could search for casts again. We'll see if it works in this one. And then you just need to click on the videos tab. And here we have three procedure videos for casts. And when you click through to the video, you have the video itself. And then there's an indication in the bottom right of the articles the video is from. And if you click on one of these articles, there is a date at the top, which should give you a general sense of when somebody evaluated the article and decided the video was appropriate. It doesn't necessarily when, indicate when the video was last updated because sometimes the videos are external and the date here doesn't necessarily match the date the video was created. But this should give you a general sense of when the content of the video was last assessed for accuracy. There's a professional and consumer version of the manual. So if we look at CASTS again, you have these three results and you can switch the consumer version up here. And we have a different set of results. The professional version is more geared toward health professionals, whereas the consumer version is more for patients, families, and the general public. And you can switch between the two at the top, as I mentioned. There's also a mobile app for the Merck Manual, and there are different versions for different target audiences, including consumers, professionals, veterinarians, and obstetricians. The Ovid database includes over 10,000 videos and video clips associated with books and journals available through Ovid. The videos cover demonstrations of clinical procedures, diagnosis and treatment techniques, expert interviews, lectures, and article discussions. From the main page, you can click on multimedia, so I'll just bring up the main page now. So the multimedia tab is right here. And then if you're wanting to look at videos, you can scroll down and click on media type video. Now, unfortunately, this is more of a browse function as opposed to a filter function. So I can pick video, but as soon as I click on say nursing education, then it will include images as well. You can't combine the different selections here. There is a quick search. So for example, we could type in dementia. But again, this would include everything with the term dementia, not just videos. So that's important to keep in mind. When you find a video of interest, you can click download to download it. And I'll just show you an example. You can view the video in the media player as well, and it includes closed captioning. One neat feature is that it provides similar videos that may be of interest to you related to the video that you decided to view. You'll notice when I clicked through there, there was no date for the video. In order to get the date for video, you can click on this complete reference. And then there, if there is a date associated with the video, it will be listed under publication year at the bottom. Now, as I mentioned, you can't combine the options available here, but you can do that if you go to the general search. So we could try that same search for dementia, and then we just need to make sure that we check off include multimedia. And then when we do that, we can click on this multimedia button here. And now we can further 
filter by, for example, publication type. So if we want just videos, and by duration, say we wanted videos that were four to 20 minutes. So that's sort of a workaround of not being able to filter the multimedia page. And lastly, YouTube can be a great source for video content, but it can be more difficult to determine the authoritativeness of the information contained in the videos. It's always important to pay attention to who the video is uploaded by. Often, if it's a reputable source, the About tab will include a link to the organization or individual's website where you can better assess whether the source is reliable. So if we look at this OpenRN project YouTube channel, we have the channel here, and if we click on About, you can see a description which may give you some idea of whether the source is reliable, but there's also a link to their website. And if we go to their website, we can read more about this group and decide whether the information they're providing is reliable. The OpenRN YouTube page contains media for 25 nursing simulations designed to accompany open education resource nursing textbooks funded by the US Department of Education and developed by the Wisconsin Technical College System. Osmosis.org is a leading medical and health education platform, and their YouTube channel features general consumer health videos to educate the public about important medical concepts, but many of the videos can be a useful refresher or introduction to topics for health professionals as well. Various journals also have YouTube channels. Some provide brief synopses of published articles or summarize information on a topic, such as the New England Journal of Medicine YouTube channel, and others include supplementary content and interviews related to published articles, such as the Mayo Clinic Proceedings channel. Care Channel, developed by the St. Elizabeth Foundation and funded by the Ontario Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care, is a useful resource for caregivers. It contains short videos explaining many aspects of caregiving. And I couldn't mention YouTube without highlighting that the WHA Virtual Library has its own YouTube channel that includes our video guides and webinars. These videos can be a great source of information about various library tools and resources that can help you in your work. When using YouTube, you can search a specific channel for a topic by clicking on the search bar on the channel page. So here we're on the care channel, channel page, and we could search for, for example, dementia, just by clicking on the magnifying glass there. So these are results from this particular channel, whereas if you search at the top here, that will just be a general search of all of YouTube. You can use these filter options in YouTube to sort of narrow your results down by duration, for example, or by how up to date they are. But they aren't always super useful for identifying reliable sources of videos. So if you are aware of particular channels, searching them may be the best approach. Thank you very much for attending today. And I hope you now feel more confident about finding and using video content. I encourage you to sign up for future webinars that might be of interest. You can find them on our website. And please remember that both the slides and recording of this presentation will be shared with you in the next few days. If you have any questions, please add them to the chat now or feel free to send me an email and I'll stick around for a bit to see if there are any questions. And thanks again.